Hey guys, how you doing today? Just got uh, out from the library. I've, I've picked up a whole bunch of books. Look at that. The uh, I'm gonna start a series of uh, book reports because I got the time. So uh, I'm gonna uh, start doing that on this channel. Um, got a good selection. I thought I was going in to get one book. Turns out I got, what, six books? Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess I've got some reading to do. Um, Today's video is going to be more about Doug Ford's evictions. Uh, my local representative, Rima Burns McCown, uh, stood up in Parliament uh, and put it right to the Ford administration. Uh, why is Doug Ford not protecting these people who are going to be evicted due to a pandemic through no fault of their own? Yeah, it's a really great question. And it's a really great, great question that I don't see getting asked anywhere, right? I don't see anyone in our media, anyone in our media, actually talking about this absolutely crucial, crucial issue. Like, guys, look around me. Like, look around. I'm going to do a 180. Look around behind me. What do you see? What do you see? Do you think it's warm? Do you think it's warm right now? Do you think it's nice right now? Right? People are going to be evicted from their homes because, and into this cold, into this cold, right? Where do you think they're going to go? Where do you think these people are going to go, right? They're going to end up in the cold. They're going to end up in the street. And Doug Ford is going to let that happen. And because Doug Ford doesn't give a crap about them. What, who Doug Ford gives a crap about are these owners, these landlords, right? And let's, let's just put to bed straight away. We're not talking about some, like, 70-year-old grandmother who has a basement suite, right? Like, this is not what we're talking about. We are talking about large-scale corporate owners who have thousands and thousands and thousands of units, who have, who have multiple properties, who have multiple buildings. These are the people who are doing the evicting in this province. And we're just going to allow them to throw people into the cold in the middle of a pandemic, for what? There's this absurdist narrative that exists on the far right that says, yeah, we should throw people into the cold and let them freeze to death on the streets because how else are the, these uh, corporate landlords supposed to make money? They own properties, you dingleberries, right? If you own property here in the city of Toronto or in Ontario generally, you're making money hand over fist just by the property value increasing, right? The investment is not having renters, right? That's not where you're making your money. You're making your money on the fact that your property increases in value exponentially over time. That's how the system has always been and has always worked. And if these landlords are getting upset because they can't throw people onto the streets and have them freeze to death in the city of Toronto, then they should sell their property for hundreds of millions of dollars and get out of the business, right? That would actually be my preference. I would love it if they sold their property to the city so that the city could take this uh, endeavor over, create actual affordable housing, get rid of these parasites who do no work, provide no value for the society, and who actually... And then we could actually create a system where the people who are living in the properties actually have some sort of vested interest or some stake or some claim instead of allowing these parasites to uh, uh, enact policies such as throwing people out onto the streets uh, in minus 20 weather in the middle of a pandemic. Like, what we are seeing here in Canada is the rise of some kind of demonic energy, right? Like, we know that there is a rising tide of fascism that is coming in, that is, exists in Canada. We, we know that that's the truth. And this, uh, this energy that exists where we, we turn on our neighbors, where we treat each other like we're supposed to be commodities, right? This, this rising tide that says, uh, uh, oh no, you're not a person who should be treated with dignity. You are defined by how much money you can create for a parasite right? That 
this is the litmus test for how our society works. Well, that's going to have profound effects on how our society works and functions, or should I be clearer and say doesn't work and doesn't function. And you can see it in the way that we uh, act on the world stage, right? I bring up all the time, we are currently selling weapons to a regime that is committing a genocide in Yemen. And the reason we're selling them weapons is to commit that genocide in Yemen. That's the reason we're doing it. We're literally going into unceded First Nations land and assaulting First Nations people who are not Canadian citizens, right? While simultaneously like buying pipelines, but oh, not pipelines for water. Don't want to confuse you, right? Not pipelines for water. Like, we have a mental illness. We have a sickness in our country that, that places the value of money in offshore accounts for billionaires at a, at a higher price uh, or at a higher value than basic human decency and basic human life. The idea that our society is struggling with the concept of feeding and sheltering its citizens like, forget about in, a, in the midst of a pandemic. Like, forget about that. Just generally, what kind of society can't actually provide basic food and basic shelter for its society while simultaneously pro proclaiming itself one of the greatest societies in human history, right? This is a society that has a significant mental illness. That, that refuses to see itself for what it is, that refuses to acknowledge who it is or what it's doing, uh, that is abandoning people. And we're seeing it right here. And I've just got to circle back. It's extremely weird. It's extremely weird that no one in the media is picking up on this. It's extremely weird that I have not seen any op-ed articles on this. It's extremely weird that a guy like me on YouTube is a head of like people who's, this is their job. This is their job. They're paid by places like the Toronto Star, the places by the National Post to actually provide commentary, right? They're paid people who are doing this and they can't get their act together to actually do something and to actually say, hey, Doug Ford shouldn't abandon people into minus 20 weather in the middle of a pandemic. Right? We shouldn't be evicting people at all, frankly, let alone under these conditions. And yet here we are. Here we are. Dead silence from our, from our corporate-controlled and corporate-owned media. And, and that's for good reason, right? They don't want you to understand that you're going to be abandoned. They don't want you to understand that with the stroke of a pen and the writing of a single sentence that you could be abandoned to the cold in the street. They don't want you to understand... That, uh, that that is actually happening. They want that to just be a latent threat that exists in the back of, their, back of your mind. They don't want you to understand that it's an actuality, that, that there are actually people this is actually happening to, right? Because then you'll stop supporting a system that's designed to destroy you. Then you'll, stop, then you'll stop supporting a system that's designed to completely betray and completely throw you under the bus, right? And yet here we are, just blithely going along, pretending as though Everything is hunky-dory and everything is totally fine. And the laugh, on my, in my view, I just read a, uh, an article saying, oh, uh, uh, Justin Trudeau's polling numbers are down because of his slow vaccine rollout, right? As if Justin Trudeau's vaccine rollout could actually be faster, right? Because the populace doesn't actually have an understanding of how the capitalist system works, how it functions, and why it is failing. And that is intentionally done. And, and it isn't until you actually see yourself getting uh, uh, victimized by the negative consequences, even though you're victimized by the negative consequences on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, you go to work for a wage, right? Right? Yeah? You, have, you, have you actually met your owner? Right? There, there's a good question I like to ask people. Have you met your owner, right? Who owns you? Have you met them? And so this sickness that's permeated into our culture and has allowed us to 
alienate each other and alienate ourselves from each other is is coming home to roost. We are going to experience mass evictions in this province as, as long as our media stays completely silent about it. We are going to see people suffer. We are going to see them thrown out into the cold. Uh, right now, we've literally got uh, uh, Rima Burns McCown talking about it. I haven't even, I haven't even seen uh, Andrea Horath talk about this with seriousness uh, uh, yet. Which, I mean, well, you know, Andrea, I love you. I love you dearly. I love what you do in the house. I wish you'd bring that energy into the public, right? It's, it's, it's that same thing that happened to, to Tom Mul Mulcair, right? He was beautiful in the house and then just ran like a teddy bear on the campaign and everybody reviled it. I worry that she's going to do the same thing. Anyway, that's a tangent. This whole thing is a tangent. What am I even talking about? Right? What am I even talking about? My whole life seems to be a tangent. <sighs> anyway, anyway, we can do better than this. Like, we can do better than this. We can do better than literally evicting people in the middle of the cold, and in the middle of a pandemic. We can do better than that. And who, who is it benefiting, right? Who is it benefiting, evicting these people? Because it's not being done for the money, as I've been sa saying this whole time, right? Like, these property owners and these property management companies, like, they, they, they own property in Toronto. The, 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 the value increase of the property alone is uh, worth millions and millions of dollars. The, the, the pithy little rent that they're getting from, the, from their renters has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with, uh, uh, their bottom line ultimately, right? And, and I know that's true because many of these companies are actively sitting on empty property, right? Like this is the true nature of this grift. These properties actively sit on empty properties for uh, uh, a couple of reasons. Reason one, it drives up the price of rental properties to sit on other uh, rental properties. Uh, reason two, you don't actually have to deal with people renting your properties then. You can just sit on the empty property and just turn around and, and, and sell it because they're speculating with our housing market. That's what they're doing. And then three, it asserts dominance, which is what this is all about, right? It is all about asserting power and asserting dominance and keeping workers in their place and keeping workers uh, uninformed illiterate, helpless, isolated, so that when they finally turn around and, and drive the dagger into their back by evicting them onto the streets, into the cold, in the middle of a pandemic, no one will care or even know about it. And as these evictions unfold and as these start to happen, I hope that our media finally gets its, its head out of its butt and actually starts reporting on it. I'm expecting people like Bruce, McCar uh, Bruce Arthur, who uh, is someone uh, whose opinion I value. I'm expecting more politicians. I'm expecting more speech and more paper written about this. And so far, we've got literally a 30-second shout in the, in the halls of Parliament from R R Rima Burns McCowan. God bless your heart. Okay, guys, this is the end of this one. Uh... If you've made it to the end of this video, subscribe. You have to. It's the it's the law, <laughs> interstellar law. Uh, 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 please like this. It's free to do. Sends it around. The algorithm likes likes, uh, and share it. Share share it with your uh, uh, conservative uncle. Piss off your conservative dad with this kind of stuff, uh, because at the end of the day, they're wrong, and they need to be uh, 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 they need to be shown how not only they're wrong, but they're cruel and heartless in their perspective. The, uh, and, uh, do, 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 do. oh, hey, if you've got a buck in your pocket, please, I've got a, uh, Patreon down below, uh, uh, a buck is a, a cup of coffee. I, 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 I could use a cup of coffee today, guys. <laughs> okay, uh, good luck. Please, uh, uh, go try and have some fun. I'm, I've got some reading to do, right? So I'm gonna <laughs> go take care of that. Don't let these guys gaslight you, because that's all they do. Good luck.
We're gonna need it.